get started in just a minute. Go ahead and start the presentation. So hello and welcome everyone. We're about two minutes past four, uh, so we'll go ahead and get started. A very warm welcome to the March uh, 2023 Data Coordinators Quarterly Call. Um, we're very excited um, to share updates and give time for everyone to collaborate together in a couple of roundtable discussions at the end of today's session. Um, just a few uh, quick uh, housekeeping um, that uh, the uh, session will be recorded um, and archived on the event page that was shared on the data coordinators listserv um, before the meeting. Uh, Spanish captioning um, and CART are also available. Um, if And I am also going to post the Spanish captioning um, website so that if you want to look at that, then you'll have that in the chat right now. And so that link was just posted. Um, if you are just joining, um, please make sure that you are uh, muted. Um, feel free to uh, raise your hand um, or post any questions in the chat. Um, you know, we're a pretty informal group, um, so um, we're always happy to have uh, some, some discussion throughout today's session. Um, without further ado, and then we'll go ahead and jump in for today. Um, I think it'll be good to start off with introductions for some of my colleagues here um, at AUCD. Um, I can go ahead and let uh, Don Rudolph introduce herself first, and we'll go around. Hi, I'm Don Rudolph. <laughs> uh, my role here is Senior Director for Technical Assistance, and I've been fortunate to support uh, NEARS and all of you for a good number of years now. So thank you for all the work that you do with the data, because it's so much more meaningful than you know. <laughs> so go and popcorn to Oksana. I see you at the top of the, <laughs> at the list now, if you want to go next. Yes, thank you, Brandon. <clears throat> Good afternoon. My name is Oksana Klimova, and I'm Director of IT and Web Services at AUCD. And uh, uh, Jackie? Hi, everyone. My name is Jackie Sizia, and I'm the Senior Manager of ITAC, also known as the Interdisciplinary Technical Assistance Center on Autism and Developmental Disabilities. I know that's not easy. And we provide support to the LEN programs, um, as well as the DBP programs, and just wanted to thank all of you while I have a moment for attending um, the NEARS MCHB boot camp that we held in <laughs> January and February. Really could not have done it without all of, all of you. And of course, Oksana and Brandon, who um, executed it perfectly. So thank you again. So I think we have uh, Danielle on the line, too. Yes, thanks, Brandon. Hi, everyone. This is Danielle Weber. I'm the Senior Manager for the USED Resource Center, and it's nice to see everyone here this afternoon. Um, and then I think we also have Rachel on the call, too. Hello, I'm Rachel Miller. I'm a Program Specialist with the ITAC team at AUCD, and I'll be answering any questions in the chat. Um, and if you have any technical assistance needs, just let me know. So thank you for all my colleagues at AUCD for introducing ourselves. Um, I think we do have uh, one guest speaker on the call today, um, Ashley. Um, if you wanted to take a minute just to introduce yourself real quick. Hi, everyone. My name is Ashley Bonasamon, and I'll be giving an update on the um, USED resource evaluation design update. So perfect. We're very excited to have you again here today to give everyone that update, too. Um, so uh, my name is uh, Brandon Lewis. I am the data support manager at AUCD. Um, so I'm very excited to have been uh, supporting everyone with all of your questions um, and, and NEARS uh, the last um, eight to nine months now, which has been absolutely amazing. Everyone always has great questions. Um, as we're getting into the uh, agenda, uh, if you're just now joining, um, feel free to put uh, in the chat um, your 
a name, um, your program, and how many years you've been a data coordinator. Um, I think that would be really interesting to see who we have on the call today. Um, so I um, I'm going to just roll, run through the agenda uh, today, too. Um, we'll start off with an update um, for um, USETs with no cost extensions. Um, and then after that, uh, we'll uh, have an update from Ashley Salmon on the proposed USED um, performance EDNI measure. Um, update on upcoming resources um, after following that. Um, an update from the NEARS boot camp. Um, and then all uh, we have a, a demonstration planned um, for modifications in NEARS uh, that were just implemented as of um, February 1st, um, as well as some updates um, in the Autism Cares module for LENS and DBP programs. And then we'll roll into uh, roundtable discussions. Okay, so um, without further ado, um, we'll go ahead and uh, run into our first topic for today, um, an update for um, USEDs with no cost extensions. Um, we've been talking about this a little bit um, from uh, uh, some previous uh, data coordinator quarterly calls. Um, and I want to give you an update that uh, it has now been implemented and you'll see this in NEARS. Um, we're asking data entry to be completed by October 1st, 2023, um, to include projects, activities, and product records um, in with your no-cost extensions um, for your five-year closeout report that'll, um, that will need to be uh, completed um, um, at the um, appropriate time. Um, this up upcoming year, um, there is a, a custom field um, that has been generated um, at the bottom of the projects, activities, and product data sets, um, which reads include record and no cost extension NCE in parentheses four. And then you want to make sure that you select the correct year, um, which will be um, fiscal year 2022, um, which is that encompassing time frame between July 1st, 2021. Uh, to June 30th, uh, 2022. Um, I can demo this really quick in near just so you can see um, in clarification um, on that, um, which I'll jump into NEARS um, here in just a second. Um, we know we have uh, 17 uh, centers with no cost extension um, from 2022. Um, so you just wanna make sure that um, you identify this flag um, in those data sets because we'll use that um, to include those records and with your no cost extension. Um, another quick note that if you uh, did get a no cost extension, um, but don't see this field in the projects, activities, or products data set, please contact us at nears at AUCD.org. Um, and so let me uh, go over to my nears window. Uh, can everyone see my screen right now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Let me grab the right login, that'll help. <laughs> Okay, so um, we're using dummy data, so no information um, is going to be like real data um, that you might see on screen. Um, it's the same flag that's set up in each of the data sets. It's at the very bottom of the page. Um, I'm just going to demo um, adding a project record um, so that you can see that. Um, so I'm in the projects data set right now. I scroll to the very bottom of the page. Um, and then it's... Um, I'm sorry. I guess maybe that got deactivated. So here, let me try M in the activities data set. Okay. Give me a second to uh, fix this little hiccup. <laughs> yep. I wanted to save that. Okay, there we go. That'll be there. 
Okay, bottom of the data set in the activities data set, um, it's the same field and you'll see the option there. Um, if it's part of your no cost extension, you just want to select that um, and then click save. It's not a required field. Um, if it's a record you want to include for the current um, fiscal year in 2023, just leave that blank, save it, um, and you'll be good to go. Um, are there any questions that we have in the chat on that? No questions. Okay. Oh, there's not one. Okay. Will I... records only be for one or the other year? Um, so are you asking like um, if you have a record that was um, for that you want included for both 2023 and in your no cost extension, um, will you need to create separate records for that? I just want to clarify on the question. Okay, okay. Um, so Oksana might be able to help me with this question. Um, I just want sure. to make sure I'm going to give you uh, correct information on that actually. This uh, pull down list will list only one year because you got extension only for one year. That's that. That's it. There is <laughs> nothing else to explain. The funds extended for one year, and uh, we created flag to flag the um, activities, products, and project that's supposed to be um, supposed to be actually work out into the previous year. So when the year when you will be reporting, what we will do. Everything that was marked with include record in no cost extension will be rolled into your annual previous year report. So you're just going to use one year record. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you enter if you want multiple records and you want to make sure that you add one for your no cost extension and then add the second record if it's appropriate um, to add it in for, for the new year in 2023. Does that make sense, Larissa? Yeah, thank you. I was thinking about the work that spans many years and where mm -hmm. where the data goes when you uh, yes. include that. So yeah, so you entering data now, but those data that you actually entering for the no cost extension that work kind of mentally should be done in the previous year. So we asking you enter the, this year, but after that we roll it back into the previous year. So you have one report for all the work that you done. Yeah. Yeah, that is an excellent question, Larissa. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm not seeing any other questions in the chat. Um, so then I'll go ahead and go back to my PowerPoint slide then. Okay. Um, and so then my next update to share with everyone um, is that uh, there um, we shared again this update at the last um, session. Um, however, um, ACL has now decided on a finalized data collection tool for the USET supplemental um, funds and the expand COVID-19 um, vaccine access. Um, and so uh, we'll now link that um, in the chat. Sorry, went on. Okay. Um, and so if we could please uh, link that in the chat for, to this um, attached silk sheet. Um, and that is the um, now approved uh, data collection tool that AUCL is um, requesting that will be submitted separately outside of NEARS. Um, they're asking that to be submitted by, at the latest, um, Friday, March um, 31st, 2023, um, to the URC at AUCD.org email address. Um, and then there is a separate uh, uh, reporting on the American Rescue Plan funding, um, which will be completed in NEARS. Um, this will be completed um, in the annual PPR part and then a new part five um, for your 2023 and 2024 um, PPR that will be completed um, later um, in, in this year. 
Um, and so that'll again be um, due on, on July 30th, um, 2023, um, and then uh, July 30th, 2024, um, and the final report part five. Um, we've demoed this in um, previous data coordinator quarterly call. It's already um, in there in the test center. And let me know if it'll be helpful to go there, if it's helpful to visualize it. Um, I see a hands up from Nina. Yes, hi there, Brandon. Just a quick question on that COVID-19 uh, funds, because um, we had them in the previous fiscal year. So you're saying they're not going to be in this uh, 2023 fiscal year at all, that only we send it to this URC address in terms of the work we've done with these funds? Uh, yeah, that, uh, that is my understanding. Uh, they've decided on a data collection tool um, for the expand COVID-19 vaccine access um, that's to be completed along with your CDC funding um, and reporting, um, okay. which will be completed outside of NEARS. Okay, so do, do not enter in NEARS at all then. Uh, this is Don. can I pop in? Yeah, absolutely. I was actually just going to ask you. <laughs> um, that's a really good question, Nina. And I think it is one that we have talked about with um, the data uh, contractor at ACL um, because they have concerns about like duplication of data. And what we clarified with them is that this is a supplemental funding Um if it's not counted as a, it's a one-time supplemental funding, right? That was just in response to the pandemic. If a project is not entered in NEARS regarding this funding, then it won't be captured in your leveraged funds report. So similar to many other projects that you have that are, that are considered leveraged with the USAID core grant, you can consider this one to be leveraged um, so you can add a project in NEARS related to this to, to capture the funding amount. Um, if you don't want to duplicate the data, you don't need to do all the activity pieces of it in NEARS. This, C, this spreadsheet is the agreement between CDC and ACL, since the money came from CDC through ACL to you. Um, that's why it's just a little bit different than anything else that's in NEARS. Um, but it can be considered leveraged funds and it can be included as a, as a separate project so that it's reflected in your annual PPR and your five-year uh -huh. final report. Okay, thank you. That clarifies. We did put the data in from last year, but I'm assuming they want all of the data, the previous year plus the funding that we're still using then, even though we entered it in years last year, right? The activity. Correct, that's correct, because the, um, the, uh, the way the data is captured is different. What is in NEARS is what ACL wants for its PPR, your annual reporting. What's in the spreadsheet is what CDC wants oh. for their metrics. So it's, it is kind of duplicate reporting, which is, always the case with the you said because you know if you had a department of education personnel prep grant you'd be reporting twice also right so okay well since we were one of the nces we guess we didn't even submit last year so we oh. could just take those activities out right and then just have it as the project dollars then and only put the data um, from last year and this year to this mm -hmm. tool right so I think that you could probably save yourself some time if you don't want to take activities out. Just you can leave them there, and, and mm -hmm. it won't it won't be considered duplicated um, right. because one is a CDC piece yes, you, mm -hmm. is is the ACL piece. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and that link data collection tool is going to be in years. I'm sorry. Say again. Where is that data collection tool? Uh, we just posted the link in the chat. Um, again, oh, okay. it, it's it's separate. That's outside of near. It's separate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Sorry for all the questions. That clear. Oh, okay. No, it. absolutely. <laughs> Perfectly good questions, and, I, and we've long learned, long ago learned that if one person has that question, there's probably four others who did too. So, <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> at least <laughs> uh, it does. The the link does go to an Excel spreadsheet, so it does look 
uncommonly informal for a federal reporting document. Um, so if you're feeling a little unnerved by that, uh, we acknowledge it, we recognize it. This is the formal guidance. So I think we have one more hand raise. I can't see who it is though. If you just wanna go ahead and unmute. Hi, it's JC from Arizona. So I just want to clarify for this because if we um, if we go have a no cost extension for the vaccine funds, we still submit this and there'll be another one to submit later. So that's a good question because the no cost extension piece was for the you said core grant funds that piece that Brandon showed right so but for the COVID the right question I think we might have to ask the feds that question I think I don't remember Danielle Brandon sorry Don I don't mean to wait speak over you. I mean, JC, I can give you the, the language that ACL gave us is essentially that the 67 USADs, which is all of them, right, will report for the period that does capture this form, which is the April 1, 2021 through September 30, 2022, and that this form is due for everyone by March 31st. But for the 14 USADs that are all that are under the no cost extension to conduct activities after that September 30 date, ACL is gonna be providing additional guidance on how to report data for that period of the no cost extension. Okay, perfect. All right, thank you. Yep. So wonderful questions, everyone. Um, can't, can't, can't say that enough. <laughs> okay, I'm not seeing any other questions, um, so. Um, I think our next topic um, then is uh, of Ashley to take the floor. Um, Ashley, if it's okay, I can just uh, continue sharing the screen and just let me know when you want me to uh, go to the next um, slide. Okay, yeah, that works for me. Thank you. Okay. Um, so hi, everyone. Um, again, my name is Ashley Abona Salmon, um, and uh, thanks for having me. So Brandon invited me here to give an update on our project with the USAID Resource Center, or URC. Um, so I'm working closely with uh, Danielle Weber in particular to update the USAID Resource, uh, USAID Resource Center uh, evaluation design. So um, I am the, the DEI research associate at the Atlanta, Georgia USAID. However, I'm professionally trained as a biostatistician, and I work closely with our, with our data coordinator, Dr. Brian Barger, on various projects. So disclosure, I'm aware of, but not intimately familiar with NEARS, as I imagine you all are. Um, so after my update, I would appreciate if anyone who is interested in providing feedback on the utility of NEARS to measure the progress of USAID goals to please reach out to me during, during uh, this meeting time via the chat or you know, send me an email um, at asalmon3 at gsu.edu. Um, and I'll throw that in the chat a little later. Um, and so I recently spoke to a data coordinator who uses NEARS for multiple state funded project reports. So if you're someone like this <laughs> or are familiar with building custom reports in years, I would absolutely love to talk to you. Um, so if you go to the next slide, Brandon, that'd be great. So I'd just like to talk about the project from a systems change perspective. Um, so just a quick reminder about the scope of the project. Uh, we are gathering feedback from network members to inform updates to the URC evaluation design to reflect the equity, diversity, and inclusion initiatives happening across the network. Um, so as a result of that first phase of this project, of this project, which you know, I've characterized as this exploratory phase, um, three themes really stuck out. Um, so the first one is investments into the development of equity metrics across our institutions seems to have resulted from the increased awareness of health disparities. Um, and this emerged from you know, COVID-19, as well as uh, the, the summer 2020, the racial and social unrest that we all experienced from uh, police brutality and all of the, the BLM protests. So these recent events, moving on to our second theme, these recent events tested our institution's capacity be, to be culturally responsive while maintaining costs and productivity. Um, so many found this conflicting as our institutions highlighted you know, diversity, equity, inclusion, 
DEI, you know, new roles and titles emerge like my own um, and various workshops and working groups took priority um, that may not have resulted in measurable changes. Um, so the third theme is this desire for sustainable change and the lack of measurable impact has fueled an interesting phenomenon where measurement gaps are often or are, are identified and often inadequately filled, resulting in you know, missed opportunities for us to really start measuring the progress of this important work. Uh, so if you go to the next slide, Brandon, I'm great. So just a little background on the exploratory phase, um, as we're calling it. Uh, so the audience was basically anyone in the network, particularly those who had access um, to underrepresented communities. Um, the goal was to understand how USAIDs may already be assessing the progress of equity, diversity, and inclusion at their USAID. Um, the method was uh, we used semi-structured um, interviews and a grounded theory qualitative analysis. Um, and we found that recent USAID network activity led to our research participants' investment in measuring key network concepts, equity, diversity, inclusion. Um, however, some participants encountered more structural barriers than others at the USAID that really minimized their capacity to measure these complex ideas. So can we go to the next slide? Okay, so this is a, uh, an image from a practical guide to evaluating systems change in a human service system context. It's by Nancy Latham. Um, it's from Learning for Action. And it was published in 2014. Um, it, it's a part of a whole like 92 page guide. Uh, but I, I saw this graphic in there. Um, and, you know, uh, the idea of systems change, you know, really struck me as pertaining to this project. Um, so I'll just kind of visually describe uh, the image in front of you right now. So there's, you know, three different flow charts all coming together kind of into one. Um, there's uh, three main components at the top, which are institutional structures, pathways, and individual outcomes. Uh, and when you get to the bottom, there's a fourth um, category for effective collaboration and systems change. So uh, this describes a system as having three elements, institutional structures that shape pathways, which affect individual outcomes. So it says, seeing system change, how can you initiate, uh, how, how can initiatives build systems that work better for individuals? So what keeps systems from working well for individuals? Uh, you have these structural barriers that restrict the ability of actors to improve, which you know, results in ineffective pathways and leads to limited individual outcomes. Um, so in order for these systems initiatives uh, or system change initiative to contribute to system change results, we have to have effective collaboration, which supports effective system change initiatives, contributing to conducive structures that enable actors to build improved pathways, which lead to improved individual outcomes. So I'll put this in context with the project in the next slide, please. So uh, the framework impacts the connections between specific aspects of collaboration, and the ability of a system change collaborative, collaborative to lower structural barriers and improve pathways. So in order for us to lower structural barriers and improve pathways, we need to help operationalize and assess system level improvements. Um, and that will lead to better individual outcomes, right? So in context, uh, we have our structural barriers, which I identified as uh, data health or quality, but more specifically data reliability. Um, and data reliability can be defined that um, by uh, data that is complete and accurate. So right, unreliable data would be data that's incomplete and inaccurate. Um, so this emerged as it relates to collecting data at the USAID for multiple purposes, right? So you have your evaluation purposes, some people are doing collective impact, um, which make, makes its way into impact statements. Uh, different levels of data dissemination, different, you know, um, aspects of data dissemination, and various reports back to funders, right? And which creates a really big data reliability issue. Um, we, we talked about duplicate entries, you know, we're talking about um, aggregating data and disaggregating data, and the different ways that we're presenting, to, presenting the data on these different reports, which makes it very difficult to measure progress when you have to, all these different types of 
data answering kind of similar questions, but not exactly the same questions. Um, so then you have our pathways. Uh, so this idea of data literacy emerged as it relates to collecting data on and with people with disabilities, including IDDD from historically underrepresented communities. So this is the pathway that we need to improve in order to um, actually get to the individual outcomes that we're looking for, which is increased participation for, for people with disabilities, including IDD across historical underrepresented communities. Um, so then this aspect of collaboration is a huge, um, a huge part of, of, of the flow chart. Um, and so data reliability, data literacy, you know, data quality, data health, all implicates NEARS and the need for continued support from data coordinators like yourself, uh, directors and program staff throughout the network. Um, you know, you all have a set of skills and knowledge that would really make this, you know, stick, you know, and create sustainable practices um, that really would allow us to start measuring these um, important concepts. Um, and then lastly, so the scope of the project implicates people with disabilities, more specifically people with IDDD as key stakeholders, um, and they should be included in all phases of the project. Um, ultimately, we will be improving their outcomes by measuring these things, right? So if you can't see it, you can't change it, right? So we really want to be able to see what's going on at the USAID, at the individual level, at the USAID level, so that we can really improve outcomes for all. Uh, next slide, please. I guess that's that's it. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you, Brandon, um, and thank you all. And you know, so I think just one thing that I'd like to leave you all with um, is there there are more things in years uh, that I can explore, um, and Brandon has been a, a, a good help um, with that for me. Um, and so just to remind everyone on, on the proposed. PR language from ACL is increasing the percent of people with disabilities, including IDDD, from historically underrepresented communities who participate in the development, implementation, or evaluation of a USAID project. Um, and in working with um, Brandon, you know, I found that we could consider updates to the project's data set to include fields for other disability, expanding beyond IDDD, just to um, satisfy the language. From ACL. Um, and then the project's data set also links uh, to the directory data set where we propose capturing additional information on project support staff in the contact field, um, including students, staff, faculty, you know, caregivers, family members, as well as community organizations. Um, you know, and we, I don't know how, how much this recommendation uh, might resonate, um, but I did propose the idea of tying funding to a five-year USAID core grant for this particular PPR so to consistently capture changes over time. Um, then, then that proposed PPR measure may need to sunset quantitatively after five years, you know, assuming that you reach this critical mass, right? Um, but we also have to maintain or have to ensure that positive quantitative outcomes are maintained um, so that we can really really understand. So no, no, we need to sunset it quantitatively after five year, years, ensuring positive qualitative outcomes are maintained. So once you reach that critical mass, these qualitative outcomes, so this meaningful participation at critical at all critical stages of the USAID project should continue to develop over time beyond that five-year grant period. Um, so that this is just kind of where my thinking is now. Uh, we're moving on to this next phase with the cognitive interviews, really trying to um, iron out some different approaches uh, to training and technical assistance related to um, the rollout. Um, so again, if if any of this sounds interesting to you um, as a data coordinator or as somebody who really loves exploring NEARS and this, different possibilities, I would really, really, really love to talk to you. Um, so if you could send me an email, I think Don posted my, um, my email in the chat. Um, please, please, please reach out to me. I'd love to talk to you before the end of the month. So thank you, Brandon. <laughs> so thank you so much, Ashley, for all the amazing work that you have put into this already. Um, I know um, and we're just kind of digging into this. Um, I know we've already come a long way. I'm excited to see, um, you know, where we end up um, too. So um, 
thank you so much um, too for for everything that you're you're doing with, with the network and for the network. Uh, do we have any questions for Ashley before we go on? Okay, I'm not seeing anything in the chat. I'm not seeing any hands raised? <laughs> Okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, dredge onward then. <laughs> okay, so um, our next topic uh, for discussion uh, is just a, a couple of updates on upcoming resources. Um, LPQI videos are in progress. Um, we'll be sharing more information um, on these as soon as they're available. I mean, we've gotten a couple of requests um, for the nearest calendar for 2023, um, and I I'm in planning to um, get this underway within the next week or two as well. Um, and so I'll share more information as soon as that is available as well. Um, we're very, very excited to announce um, that the first ever uh, 2023 Spanish paper forms um, have also arrived um, and they are on the nearest resources page. Um, I can show you where to find those really quickly. I'm gonna share over on the on my other screen really quick. Give me just a second. Should be that one. Okay. Can everyone see my uh, screen? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's uh, on our AUCD homepage um, under resources, NEARS. Um, and then you scroll down and go to NEARS resources. And you see in big red letters uh, uh, the paper forms um, and in Spanish. Um, and then you can uh, click on here and find the correct form. I know we're still waiting on a couple of forms, but most of them are here. We wanted to make them available as soon as possible. Um, I'll be, we'll be posting um, the um, other ones as, as soon as possible. Okay. Um, and uh, then I also wanted to give an update that the NEARS bootcamp, uh, which just concluded on February, um, or early February, um, has been archived um, and materials for each session are linked at the top of the page as well. Um, and so I, I've linked everyone to the event page um, so that you're able to find those if you would like to listen in. Um, we have a couple of materials listed for each day, including the PowerPoint slide deck um, and a, a demo uh, script um, that walks through um, the uh, demonstration portion for each session. Um, if we could also go ahead and uh, link that in the chat too, please. Okay, um, and then before we jump into uh, the uh, demonstration portion for modifications in NEARS, um, I just want to check to make sure we don't have any questions. I'm not seeing any in the chat, I don't see any hands raised, so I think we're, we, we might be okay. Uh, so for this next uh, portion, I'm just going to go ahead and jump into NEARS, um, and then um, I'll point out uh, the, the changes in the system, uh, because it's sometimes easier to have the, the visualization. So let me go back into my NEARS window. Okay. Everyone able to see uh, NEARS? Yes. Okay, thanks. Okay, so the first one is going to be, so we'll start off in the in the trainees data set. Um, and so uh, this will be for long, uh, medium term um, and short term trainee forms. Um, and so all, um, all three uh, types of uh, trainees. Um, so I'm going to go to trainees data set, I have long term, medium term, uh, just so you can um, see this. Um, it's a new field um, called gender identity. Um, and it has a new list. Um, it's about, it's about halfway down the form. Um, and it is um, right here. Um, 
if you click uh, the drop down, um, you'll see a couple of new options. Um, and so you just want to select what is most appropriate um, based on um, federal re reporting requirements. And we've seen a couple new options um, for uh, like transgender man, um, transgender woman, um, as well as other or um, choose not to disclose slash unknown. Um, if you select other, uh, there, a secondary text box um, will be um, uh, per provided so that um, some specifications can be provided, um, and then you can just uh, type um, whatever is most appropriate. Um, a quick note that uh, no pronouns um, are being requested. Um, like uh, they're not requesting uh, the federal funders are not requesting um, reporting um, like they them or their pronouns um, or Z or here, um, for example. Um, they're uh, just requesting. Um, male, female, transgender, uh, man, transgender, woman, um, and those are the options that are, are being requested right now. Um, so just some quick clarification on that one. Uh, the next update and the uh, trainees data set is the race options, which is the uh, question that is just um, below it. Uh, all options are the same. Um, it is just the order of the options have been reordered to be alphabetized, um, just with the exception of uh, the last two options um, uh, for more than one races are unrecorded. Um, and then the uh, and the no changes were made to a, a ethnicity. Um, so th those options are the same. Uh, these... I have a question. I'm sorry, Brandon. Um, for um, for race, uh, can a, can a trainee select more than I mean, rather than selecting more than one race, can the trainee simply select, you know, more than one option? Uh, the form uh, currently re uh, requires that um, it, only one option can be selected um, for um, each each trainee. Hmm. That that doesn't capture my children. Can I jump uh, in? Yeah, can you? So go ahead. <laughs> this is Dawn, um, and I want to first absolutely acknowledge that there are flaws to how the data is collected. Um, and there's a work, there's a, there's a round table discussion on just that topic in this meeting that I would be very happy to talk further with. What I can say is that there has, there is a significant federal effort underway to completely revise how across federal agencies race and ethnicity data is collected. There has been a public call for comments. There was a 60 day comment period. There was a 30 day comment period that just closed two days ago, I believe. <laughs> um, and I'm sure if I search, I can find the, um, the federal register notice or the, the, the information that shows the breakdown that they have, which is very, very, very different than anything we've seen before. It includes Middle Eastern op options. There's all kinds of options and details. Um, what we are doing here in NEARS, we are required to align with federal guidance. We know that that's flawed. The feds also know that that's flawed, which we're really excited about, um, and they're working to fix it. Um, I think, I'm not sure why, uh, when we know there's a, a, some federal efforts underway to fix this, and similarly, there is a federal work group within HHS that is working specifically on the sexual orientation and gender identity. Uh, they literally are calling it SOGI uh, right now, the acronym, Sexual Orientation and Gender Identity. Um, what we don't understand, what we're not sure of is why uh, the the um, project officers or the funding agencies for the USEDs and the LENS are going through with some changes in sexual orientation and gender identity fields. I think that we can agree that what Brandon just showed as being updated in NEARS is still inadequate. Also, there are many people who don't find themselves in that list. 
Um, we have been connected to the policy office within ACL because we've raised the question with them that we hear there are federal work groups happening, but we also hear that there are individual federal agencies who are in that work group who are putting out other guidance in the meantime, and our network is confused, and is there any way we can align this? Um, the person who's in, in uh, who received that, whose desk this landed on, turns out is a former LEN trainee. So which of you has trained Amanda Cash? because that's the person that we're gonna have some conversations with about this and thank you for training her. <laughs> um, so we know it's inadequate, but that's like the context of what we know and um, the federal government moves slowly. I see two- oh, Thank you for your efforts. <laughs> oh, we, we uh, yes. And if there's any opportunity that we have to feed information to the folks, which I think we do have their ear now. Um, these are the kind of examples that we bring to them. So I really appreciate you raising your, your voice and, and advocating. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Robin. Hello. <laughs> I have a question uh, just specifically about the short-term trainee form and whether it was requested by uh, the federal funders to require some fields that hadn't been required before um, because uh, gender identity, even though it's not marked as a required field, uh, seems to be required. Uh, the, the gender drop down here and won't let us save the form. Uh, and so, you know, temporarily we're choosing the choose not to disclose unknown. Here, let me, uh, that, that is a good Robin, question. Uh, this see. is Oksana. It's, <laughs> it's definitely should not be required. If it's required, it's, uh, we miss it through the testing and mm -hmm. we, we will fix okay. it uh, in the next day. Thank you for right. bringing this to attention. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and I, I, I see it right here, actually, too. So thank you, Robin. I appreciate it. You're welcome. That. Yes, we find <laughs> things. Um, and, uh, <laughs> you know, and we have no problem with uh, the longer term trainee, uh, you know, fields being required. But for short, for short term, yep. uh, you know, it's very difficult when we have such a short term um, time yep. with these students and we're not requesting that information and it should be self-report. Yep. But for long, long and medium, it was always required. Yes, just to be, just to fine. be clear. Yep. Yes, okay. That, it is mm -hmm. fine. It's yep. just short term. Suddenly, <laughs> uh, that, right. uh, that changed. And also for short term, uh, program type seemed to have disappeared for us to indicate whether it is you said or land activity. I will double check. I write it down. I will double check. Okay. What is that? Yep. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it for me. <laughs> so no, thank you so much for uh, for for pointing those out, Robin. Uh, You're welcome. I, and I'll give a shout out to to Jill, our Lend Data Coordinator, uh, for <laughs> <laughs> for bringing that to my attention. Uh, so I'm speaking for us at the Bog Center. <laughs> I see uh, Lori also has uh, their hand raised too. Lori, you're muted. Long time no Zoom. Um, <laughs> my 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 comment was back when Don was discussing the roundtables and various government groups, um, and I I I did just I, I was wondering about if the gender question was included in that, which you pointed out it was. So thank you. Um, and that the options were um, not sufficient. That's not the way I want to phrase that. But I, I, I just I, I want to say that in some states right now, I'm going to guess a lot of people are not going to want to identify with some of those things. Um, and I just wanted to say that. Thank 
Yeah, thank you for for that comment as well. It's it's um and, and, uh, very appreciative of, of any comments um, or or any um, thoughts that I have on on this is. You know, as our feds are going through the re uh, review process, um, and um, anything, um, you know, we can do to um, help. Um, well, and if, if you could keep us updated on how that's going, that would be great as well. Yeah. So thank of you course. very much for advocating. <laughs> and truly, if anybody here, if Amanda, if Amanda Cash went through your LEND program, we're going to have to find her. I'm going to search near to see where she was going. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I am not seeing any other questions in the chat unless if I've missed one. Um, Brandon, I do see a question from Dina Johnson about, um, have you made it through all of the revisions yet? Revisions. Uh, we still have a couple of other uh, uh, pieces for the demonstration portion that we'll go through. Okay, great. Dina, yeah. Um, Okay, so uh, that was it for uh, the long term and short term uh, records. I want to jump over really quick to the uh, directory um, data set really quick because those uh, gender options are also mirrored um, in uh, the faculty form as well in NEARS. Um, and so I'm just going to uh, jump over there really quickly. It's about halfway down the form again. Random, um, those was, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. No, no, go ahead. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, uh, it, again, you'll see that uh, gender uh, field uh, listed in uh, faculty and those same options are, are listed um, based on what our federal funders um, requested for, for, for those updates. So I think, uh, was that, Sister Stewart, did you have any questions? All right. No, I, um, no, I was, um, I was um, going to um, make my courtesy um, question um, right now, which I really on the on this call to to make. It's, um, it's okay if um, if nobody um, if nobody can answer this, and I'm not requesting that it be added to added to NEARS. But um, but I was wondering if 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 there was um, any um, cohesion in the way when collecting information, um, um, other other use sets besides my besides my own um, ask for. Um, pronouns from their trainees if they ask them at all which which probably many of them don't um and probably and 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 I'm asking um whether whether they give um citation examples in um as um with with two forms or three such as such as he, him versus he, him, his, she, her versus she, her, her. Um, uh, uh, and what to, what they do when they when they're given a set of um, a set of pronouns that is um, um, that is unfamiliar and possibly cited incompletely by the person who wants to use them. Um, wondering if maybe one of my team members might have. Uh... This is Dawn. It's <laughs> interesting because it strikes me that this is a great topic to discuss. It's not required in federal reporting, but it can be uh, certainly a piece of of how a program chooses to be, sort of part of the program culture, and. I wonder if it would be helpful to, uh, and I don't know if, if uh, I don't know, well, what would be helpful? Maybe, I mean, I almost wonder if there's a technical assistance question here that's a programmatic question. How do programs, uh, you know, raise, how do, how do programs 
do this, right? If, if it's not something they've done before, if they haven't asked about pronouns before, how do they get there? If it's in a state that maybe is not receptive, maybe the state legislature is not receptive or the university administration is not receptive, um, it could be a different approach to how it's done. I mean, there, there's a lot of talking around this one. Um, I do think it's important it's unfortunate that it doesn't get captured here in, in NEARS at all because it isn't required for data collection. Um, and I'm wondering if this is something that we might put a pin in to say, oh, hey, this might be something that we can address uh, like, a, like a, an emerging need that might be identified that any of our technical assistance activities, maybe outside of NEARS could better tackle. That's where I, that's why I was brought onto this call to begin with. Okay. I, I posed it at the um at the Nears boot camp. Yeah. And Stuart, I'm like uh very uh the technical solution and maybe it's not gonna be solution for like complete solution, but a kind of shortcut. You can use user defined field. So it's not going to be required field, but you can capture pronunciation and pronounce in that field. And that will give uh, data coordinate, data coordinators can look at the trainee record and uh, maybe share this with everybody in the program. So everybody will be aware about trainee pronunciation. Um, and I can see that Julie posted in the chat, we ask trainees their preferred name and pronouns for name tags before orientation, as well as accommodation needs, dietary allergy issue, and et cetera. You have 10 fields, user-friendly um, custom fields that you can use in trainee profiles. So you can capture that information in years and it can be searchable and you can create reports to, to kind of um, pull this information uh, from their records. Yeah, I understand that Oksana, you've told me that in the past. You, <laughs> al you also, um, um, my question was purely non-technical. Okay. I mean, yes, in this case, it's definitely, that's what I said, the technical solution, it's there for you, but you need to, uh, you know, reach for maybe TA support uh, and ask how uh, centers do that. Yep. Yeah. And maybe it'll be a good topic of discussion for the roundtable discussion um, here in a little bit too, which would be pretty exciting. <laughs> okay. Um, so I will go ahead and uh, continue on with a demonstration for NERS modifications. Our next couple of updates um, are in the uh, long-term uh, trainee surveys. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, jump over to my survey. Um, and so I, I just went ahead and I uh, uh, prepared uh, a login for us just so I could get into the trainee survey, the lens survey specifically really quick. Um, so that I can uh, demo this for everyone. Uh, the uh, first uh, question uh, that has been updated um, is uh, this uh, question, select a primary type um, setting of employment. Um, you'll notice that there is a new option. Um, we combined uh, three separate options um, that were um, for-profit setting, a nonprofit setting, and hospital. And that has all been combined into this clinical health care setting that um, within parentheses includes hospital health centers and clinics. Um, clarification, we did not, but the um, federal funder <laughs> re-requested us to do that, so uh, we implemented it. Um, the uh, next uh, uh, options that were updated um, was the uh, working with underserved um, populations or vulnerable groups. Um, which was uh, this question that was right up above it. Um, the language has been updated uh, to now read working with populations um, that are underserved or have been marginalized. Um, and so the language has been slightly tweaked to remove ableist language um, in uh, some of the uh, questions in the, in the trainee survey. Okay. 
Uh, okay. Uh, and then uh, the last updates um, in NEARS um, is in the uh, products uh, data set. Um, and so I'm going to uh, um, add a product so I can um, show everyone. Uh, the first update um, is in the product material type web-based products. Um, and it is the uh, material type field. Um, we have updated uh, the option um, for social networking sites to now read um, social networking slash social media sites. Uh, this update has also been mirrored in the uh, peer review publications um, in scholarly journals and press. So that's published again in the uh, material type. Ah, no. Saksana, did I miss the field? Oh, I am so sorry. Okay, I understand. It's a uh, di dissemination. Um, th this is a separate um, update and the uh, product material types. <laughs> uh, so sorry for the confusion. Um, it's mm -hmm. um, uh, the dissemination, dissemination. vehicle mm -hmm. field. Yes, okay, yep. thank you. Um, and so uh, that that now reads um, social networking, social media um, sites, and in the dissemination vehicle um, field, um, and the uh, product material type um, peer review publications um, in press. And then the last update um, for uh, products um, was in the material type distance learning modules. Uh, two updates in this one. Um, which is in the, uh, the, this one is in the type. Um, there are two separate updates in the same field. Uh, the first one is again, that the social networking um, ha has been updated to social networking slash social media sites. And then now we have a new um, category as well called wikis. Um, and that uh, concludes um, the updates for the uh, for 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 that portion. Um, we do have some updates in the autism uh, cares module for lens um, that lens and DBP programs will complete. I wanted to check if we have any questions before I move forward. Okay. Um, I do see a question from Dina Johnson asking. If there are any updates on question four of the survey, uh, she says we are getting a lot of no's when we think it should be yes. Uh, so question number four. Uh, I, I do you know the specific question that's being asked? So the surveys may differ a little bit depending on uh, questions. Is it the one that um, is asking about current work in public health um, organization or agency? Yes, it's that one right there that you have. Okay, okay. Um, you know, the, the, this survey was not updated. I mean, uh, I will double check that code is uh, unchanged, but mm -hmm. uh, it, we, di we didn't implement any changes to that question. Yeah. Yeah. I will double check. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. Thank you so much, Adina, for uh, for asking. Okay. Dina, and this is for you said land survey, right? Um, we were a land you said. Yes, you land you said. So yeah, you, you're using link to you said land slash land survey, right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very helpful. Okay. Uh, so I'm not seeing any other questions. Um, so I'm going to jump over to the uh, Autism Cares module. Um, just to demo uh, two quick changes. 
Um, it looks like uh, Oksana has added um, in, the, in the test center the, the new CARES module, which would be very helpful for our demo today. <laughs> um, we'll uh, make these updated a, a little bit closer to June um, for, for everyone, um, like we'd have done in previous years. Um, uh, th this will uh, show the the updates some um, that that have that will be um, whenever the, it is whenever you go to complete the autism cares module um, later this year. Uh, the first change is that we have added uh, in um, per request from MCHB uh, some language at the uh, top of the um, screen and because there have been some updates again to remove some ableist language um, from surveys um, and in the autism uh, cares module. Um, and so to not ad lib, um, I'm just going to read straight from this screen uh, to not add any, um, any additional language or anything. Um, it reads, uh, some terminology in the cares module and data dictionary have been slightly updated by ITAC to reduce ableist language language, e.g. AS slash DD will replace ASD slash DD to remove the abbreviation for the disorder. Uh, the data collected and reported by programs remains unchanged and the definitions remain unchanged. The second uh, a change um, that has happened um, is in the topic area one, training trainees. Question number one, the total number of trainees for short-term, medium-term, and long-term trainees um, have been grayed out. Um, MCHB uh, felt that uh, this the, the data on short-term, medium-term, and long-term trainees um, was duplicated in the CARES module, um, since that has already been reported on um, in your annual report in EHB, um, and so they decided that they were going to take the information um, that was already reported um, in the EHB, um, as opposed to also collecting it in duplicate um, in the Autism CARES module. Uh, so do we have any uh, questions uh, for the Autism Cares module? I don't see any in the chat. Okay. Okay, is everyone able to see the uh, slide deck? Sorry for the really quick. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, so it's my pleasure that um, so uh, we're on to roundtable discussions now. That was um, the last of my updates. <laughs> uh, so very excited um, for uh, the roundtable discussions. Um, as of right now, we have uh, three that um, everyone will be able to self-select. Uh, the first one um, is on uh, data um, entry uh, continue, um, for um, data collection for changes in gender identity field, um, as well as um, we can also discuss um, like Stuart's question, for example, on um, pronouns as well, um, if that's an interest for the group. Um, the second uh, breakout room is um, on, uh, we wanted to get some feedback on NIR's resources. Uh, specifically on the um, NEARS um, calendar format. Um, I will be creating one for 2023, uh, but we thought it might be helpful um, if there's maybe a more interactive format um, that might be um, helpful for everyone to streamline like getting it onto your calendars or um, whatever is most helpful, um, as well as any other NEARS resources um, that are a need in the network right now. Um, and then I also received a request um, for uh, processes on data cleaning and data quality as well. And so um, we created a uh, breakout room for that as well. And so let me um, stop sharing really quick um, and then let me get everyone into the breakout rooms. Sorry, give me just one second.
Um, I say we'll um, convene back in probably uh, like 15 minutes, I feel like is a good, and then we'll report back to the group. Um, okay, and then open rooms for all. Okay, so everyone should see that. Um, and so you'll be able to self-select. Um, I'll be um, in the nearest resources room. Hi, hi. Somehow in the midst of shifting over here, I forgot to listen to what Brandon said about how long we have. <laughs> 15 minutes. 15 minutes. 15 minutes, yeah. I got that. The rest is yours. <laughs> yeah, well, or the rest might be yours because I feel like now is a really good time for me to collect some information that I can feed to the federal government about what's important. Right. <laughs> Unless there's another way to use the time, but I feel like like strike while the iron is hot right now, like they are open to the conversation right now for the first time ever. Yep. But that's my agenda. Why are you in this room? What do you want to come to this room for? To clarify what is exactly needed and how, right? <laughs> <laughs> they just throw this at us so let's find out how we should collect it and how what is it needed for to begin with mm. and how it's being used because as much as we collect data how is it used <laughs> and that's important especially when you're collecting some personal data exactly yeah. locations who to yeah. share with yeah. Okay. I'm sure we're gonna get that um that question from our students or you know, especially if it's a required uh, question mm -hmm. and we ask them to complete it. Yeah. Well, I know right now we're doing obviously the two, five, and ten surveys out to trainees and getting right. information back. When I send those emails out to them, I do individualized emails to all hundred and 30 whatever people that we do and uh, I always ask them if you know if they have a few moments to send me an email back giving me sort of further information too uh, about how they're doing and um, you know how what land is meant to them or you know whatever mm -hmm. what they're doing now and sometimes I just get great pictures of their you know newborn babies and things which are lovely and sometimes uh -huh. I get lovely stories about how they're really doing some impactful leadership in wherever it is they go. So um, I know I, I just collected some of the more recent ones and gave those to Gail, our, our LEN coordinator, to share forward to um, for use to tell Congress or, or whatever else um, uh, related to this. So, um, you know, that's one way we're trying to get some of that information mm -hmm. uh, back there and make an impact. Yeah. Some of that's in the survey, but um, uh, it's to a fairly minimal extent. There's there is a question I um, I assisted uh, one of one of my um, um, former trainees uh, who uses a uh, eye gaze device, and, mm. and it's really challenging. She was not able to do the uh, the survey herself using her device. So uh, I certainly wanted to give that feedback. But um, oh. I, when I sent the survey to her, I said, if you have any problems with this, contact me and I'm happy to do a Zoom call and we can do it together, which we did a couple days ago. So um, so her eye gaze device when it was unable to navigate the survey? Okay. Yeah, she also has issues with dyslexia. So there's multiple issues involved mm -hmm. with her being able to, because, you know, to, to, have it read to her but also where it is she has to go and fill in and everything she was not able to do it her well, accessibility yeah. gotcha. okay thank you the the gender identity questions um they're not on the current um 
five, 10 year surveys, are, are they? I don't think they are. No. Or they're not required at all, right? Mm -mm. Yeah. So. And this is Nina, but we are required to enter it in the for medium term and long term LIN trainees in terms of their gender. So we would have to ask them to report it to EHB. Mm -hmm. And that's super, I, I find that to be maybe super uncomfortable to be asking trainees to fill out these options that we know are inadequate so far from adequate. Um, what would help you? Because I don't know, like I can share the context of how I know we got here and I can't change the feds minds between now and the next time your trainee has to do something that might be deeply uncomfortable. So what would help? Did they even have a work group with those to figure out what those options should be? Okay. That there is a work group underway. There is an HHS wide work group underway, which is why I'm so surprised that ACL and MCHB put out changes in data collection now when both well, of fine. them are in HHS. So why is this HHS wide work group working on this topic and yet some of the federal agencies are putting out other guidance in the meantime for what data collection is happening. That's how we ended up connected to now I know at Oklahoma's former LEND trainee, Amanda Cash, um, who indicated she was not available to meet until March because she was so busy. So, uh, uh, I wish the other option, which uh, in itself is offensive because, oh, yeah. right, um, Said, said something like, we lack the imagination and knowledge to come up with something better at this time. Please excuse us, right? Some sort of disclaimer there because I'm, obviously we can't do that, but maybe in when we talk to trainees or folks, we can say, I mean, it's just a matter of putting a note in a letter saying, hey, this is a work in progress. We recognize that this is not ideal, something like that because, um, oh, you do, Jill. That's yeah. what I do. I have a little disclaimer um, in like what we put and I'm like, you know, the like the documents have an origin outside of the bog center and are not a reflection of the culture and beliefs that we have within the center. Um, mm -hmm. If you have any concerns about filling out these forms that you would like to discuss with me, um, you know, please reach out and um, which tends to be beneficial just because um, Demographically, I am closer in age to most of our LEND trainees than I am my colleagues. So they're a little bit more comfortable talking to me about concerns that they have about certain documents or whatever. Um, even if they don't remember their social security number, they're okay with coming to me. Um, but that's what I put because even when I was reading through some of the language, I was like, ah, that's kind of yucky. <laughs> Would you mind, would you be able to like copy and paste that language in a chat box for us here? And I can then grab it from there and make sure it gets into notes. Sure. It might be Does Box Center get a credit for that, Don? Because <laughs> you can call it a dissemination. You can count that one. Uh, yeah. We're making we're I, making data right now, right? Live. <laughs> I, I include vague language like that when sending out the two, five, and 10 year survey, but it never occurred to me to include it it wouldn't collecting just from current trainees so mm -hmm. that's brilliant and and I, I wish I was your age <laughs> yeah I I am also happy to take back to the feds that your grantees like like the impact that it has on the relationships that you have when when you are being forced to exactly ask for data that you know is just not right um and is offensive. So that this this these stories are helpful right here, right now. I'm taking notes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I will also just say in the state where I am right now, there are current laws in the legislature that might make people really afraid to disclose some of this information. Um I I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I it it 
I can't. Oh, you're right. I mean, some people do have legit reasons for not disclosing this information. I mean, they're not just picking and choosing that today I'm going to disclose and yeah. tomorrow not. I mean, there are, mm -hmm. you know, really good yeah. reasons that they have that, you know, maybe that should be one of the options that I choose not to disclose instead it, of other. It is. Is. It is. It is. It is one of the new ones. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you make a very good point there because Texas is very oppressive, you know, in terms of the rights of people wanting to even change their gender, parents being, you know, at risk for being prosecuted for having their child go through gender changes. So I didn't even think about that for them disclosing it, the ramifications of that. But I do like the response you gave, Jill, and thank you, Dawn, for sharing that with us. I wonder if there's an option to put on that survey, how do you prefer to identify? But then again, that comes back to the Texas law. They put that on there and there could be ramifications that might make them afraid, but that at least gives them the option for them to decide how they want to identify as opposed to other unknown, which I do find other offensive as well. Yeah. Um, but it gives them the option to decide how, because terms are always changing too, yeah. right? So to, even if you put a list there, they should always have the opportunity yeah. to express how they want to identify without being othered. Yeah, um, it's 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 interesting because I I think Chris, it was you who said, "Oh, we're, we're, progress is slow and we're making progress." Putting the word "other" is quite literally going backwards. Mm -hmm. um, we did not the change to "other" was literally a change away from language that we had carefully vetted and said if these. You know, these these are the options that are required for federal funding. And then we added, you know, some of you may remember, we had another field that said, if none of these options apply to you, please indicate how you'd like, you know, what it what does apply to you without using the word other. Like we had that for years. Yeah. And now we have other. So it is a little bit of reflecting how slow the federal government works. And uh, I, I, it's it's just interesting that you know the the folks who are now in this administration and recognizing and understanding the need for this is rolling it out at the same time that really people can get arrested for this. Exactly. That's exactly uh, like why um, when um, when we're um, when we're um, when we are explaining on the New Year's data entry form, mind you, that that these. Um, that these options were were based on options options that were given to us. You need not only do we need to know the year, but we need to know the exact month and day of the change. Yes. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. I I wanted to add that I don't know if the rest of you are the same as us, but we have so many times when trainees are coming out, it's like they fill out an application form and then they fill out a trainee registration form. And then for our Weissman Center, they have to fill out a form for being in the building and having access to things. And it's like over and over and over. And what I tried to do this past year is make sure that any of the forms that we personally had control of, I took out anything around that was not needed. We don't need to know. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's the end, right? Yeah, yes, yeah. Um oh. wanted, I wanted to give enough time um for everyone to report back on what everyone talked about. I know the breakout we sessions. Were in the middle, everyone, but... We were just in the middle of a comment. Yeah. We we I were too. Yeah. I, I that was brutal. That was brutal, <laughs> I wanted to ask, um, The gender um one obvious one very obvious omission in the gender field um that that um Dawn, that I'd appreciate that Dawn um um report back to the um um to the um uh, people who 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 created this is non-binary. Yes, completely missing. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I can't say it strongly enough. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like there was some really good conversation going on in the um, other that's, that's, uh, that's one rooms. of the things I didn't have time to make when we were actually in the breakout room that was great and no pun on the word other Brandon because we had a great othering conversation too yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, the, the options are, are very flawed, but the good news is we all, we, it is known and uh, everyone's working to, to try to come up with solutions too. So, uh, uh, if there's anyone want to share, uh, I didn't have anyone in the nearest resources <laughs> breakout room. Uh, and so, uh, anyone want to share about what I uh, talked about in the uh, other, other two breakout rooms in the last couple of minutes? I have a few notes, so I can go through them real quickly. Mm -hmm. um, there is a significant concern um, about uh, especially the gender identity and sexual orientation questions, especially for trainees who live in states where uh, there is legislation planned or already passed that would put people at legal risk. Um, and answering some of these questions might uh, end up with somebody getting arrested, thinking about states where parents can get arrested for child abuse if they are have a child who's transitioning. Um, so things like that, there are a lot of questions I think that we need to pass on to the federal agencies uh, that, that we can have the talking points to share with the trainees. Why is this needed? How is it being used? Who's it going to be shared with? Um, because those are the questions uh, that people are worried about the answers to. There will always be a, a um, an option to choose not to disclose. It would be interesting to me to track political orientation of those states that have higher rates of not disclosing, but I, I don't get paid to do that data research, but <laughs> it's interesting to me. Um, and, uh, and there was a question if we could, when we make changes in NEARS for how these uh, sensitive data collections are changed, if we might make a note about like the date of the change so folks can kind of track it. Okay. And if I missed anybody else in the work group, can absolutely correct me. It was great, great conversation. Thank you all. So Oksana, you, uh, more Jackie, um, I think you were in the other uh, breakout room if you wanna uh, share. Sure. Uh, we talk about uh, data, uh, data cleaning and actually our conversation started with sharing uh, processes uh, that centers establish to to ensure the data clean, the data entered on, on time. Um, Carol, thank you so much for sharing uh, experience from the um, from your center. We talk about uh, field and it's um, um, I, I know pain point in activities, uh, we discuss uh, core function, continuing education, community training, um, field CEU certification and how it's confusing and uh, don't maybe recognize this issue. It's been on the our list for multiple years. So, and how current setting maybe do not help uh, report accurately on what uh, centers do. Uh, we, we talk about, um, I show a couple tools, uh, our error reports, share with, with the group uh, how to keep, what, what tools can help them keep data clean. And also it was really good suggestion about um, building maybe some TA support to share custom reports across the network. Um, in this case, uh, I, I, I can see um, how it can benefit whole network and uh, how the, you know, network can keep uh, reviewing track of the data this way. So uh, I think it's, it was too short we, <laughs> time to discuss such an intense topic. So maybe we can continue this. Uh, a different meeting, or maybe we can uh, add breakout room uh, during our ACD conference time. Okay. Yeah, I. I mean, I anybody from the group, uh, feel free to jump right now and uh, add something. Yeah. Yes, I was wondering if if Robin could just finish her um, thought about the guidance that she uses. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what I said. It was brutal because yeah. we, got, we were cut right in the middle. 
Sure, um, yes, I was cut off. Yep. The <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think I was talking about uh, the guidance that we give mm -hmm. our staff, uh, which I could share, um, but we do give a specific of, and I can't remember the exact words, uh, but guidance when it's for, uh, if it's community training for a professional audience and certificates are offered, we just call it CE. It's not, um, we don't specifically uh, follow some of the uh, overall guidance, and I'm sorry, I'm tripping over my words now. Um, but I can I can share exactly what we have in our uh, in our tip sheet to our staff. That that will be great. Okay. Carol, can you send this to the um, data coordinator list, sir? Yes. I appreciate it. Thanks. You're awesome, thank, Carol. Thank you, <laughs> Robin. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I answered above. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I'm going to post the uh, survey for today's session in the chat. Um, if you're uh, able to take just a couple of minutes to fill it out, it shouldn't take no longer than five minutes. Um, we love any feedback um, on uh, today's session. Um, and again, I wanted to thank everyone for joining us today in such amazing conversation um, from everyone. Um, we couldn't have done it without you. Um, so. Um, we look forward to seeing everyone again next time. Um, and I hope everyone uh, takes care and has a great rest of the day. <laughs> Thanks, Brandon. Bye. Yeah. So, bye. Yeah, Thank bye. you. Uh, we'll hang on just for a few minutes in case if anyone has any questions. Yeah, hi, Brandon. I was going to ask you a quick question. I wasn't in your breakout room, but um, on the AUCD or the NEARS resources page, there's a bunch of training modules and they open when you click on them to, um, I think it's the Adobe Connect platform. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know if it's just me or my system or my computer, but I'm not able to access anything on Adobe Connect. I either get an error page that says something about a login not valid, or I get a login page that then tells me I, I don't have an account or access to mm. get to those. Okay. Uh, yeah, that is because I have to uh, create an account for you. Um, so that you can access them. So let me send you a welcome email really quick. I'll send that to your email just a second. <laughs> and so if I have um, other staff and colleagues who would want to access those, they would all need an account as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you can uh, just send me um, either at nears at AUCD.org or you can send it straight to me at uh, the at B. Lewis at AUCD.org. Uh, just send me their name and their email and I can, add a, I can make an account for them really quick. Okay, thank you. That answers that <laughs> internal mystery. I was like, why can't I get to this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I promise you're definitely not not the only person to tell me this uh, too. Where um, in, in the future, maybe you're going to be looking at updating them and maybe moving over to a different platform in the future, but uh, that probably won't be for another year or two. Um, we're still kind of working through in which direction we want to go. So, But I'm <laughs> always quick to encourage you to blame the technology and not yourself if you can't get something to work. <laughs> 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 Except for Nears, then that's different now. The <laughs> yes, <all. laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I just had a question. Um, if you had a minute, Brandon. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, hi again. Um, so about the COVID-19 vaccine funding, um, I just checked with Michelle and it's only, we only had to do that data collection if we got the funding, correct? Yes. Yeah, that okay. is correct. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. That's what I thought. But then someone said something about all all sites need to do it, and then. Uh, yeah, so. that is for the um, other one on the. Uh, is I'm it was trying to make sure that I, I don't don't get my my verbiage incorrect. Sorry, Don. What did you say? It was my understanding. Maybe I need to double check, but I thought we heard from our project officers that everybody accepted that supplemental funding. Mm -hmm. the program didn't. That's yes. I think Daniel Weber read it all. All program that maybe we should ask her. Mm -hmm.
Who am I asking? I'm sorry. We, well, one of our colleagues. Um, uh, okay. What, what state are you with? Uh, New York. Which center? Stony Brook. Oh, yes, you did not get it because it was user yeah. only funding. Boom, see? Yeah, there okay, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I was just about to be like, wait a minute, you're a Lind only. Yeah, don't, don't yeah. worry about it. Boom. Gotcha. Uh, okay. actually, uh, I took a site visit to Stony Brook back in uh, November. Did I meet you there? Oh, what a wonderful program. Oh, I don't know. So, that oh, thank you. Thank you. I, yeah. I'm surprised because I'm pretty sure our site visit is coming up, but maybe I you did not meet me downstate. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking downstate. Jackie had to correct me. Yeah. We'll see you um, in April, Debbie. Yes. And I'm sure we'll say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping. All right. I will see you guys soon, though. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I get the Sunnis confused. <laughs> That's explained. Okay. I was just hanging out to see what other people's questions were, but uh, thank Bye. you all. Bye. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. <laughs> Bye. So Grace um, or Roberto, um, do we have any questions? Or Ilya? Debbie just asked my question, so I got the answer. So when we do not receive the funding, we are not required to submit that form uh, data collection tool by March 31st, right? Uh, if yes, you, yeah. If you did not, uh, if you're not a you said, um, then that mm -hmm. is correct. If you're a lend only program, um, then uh, you wouldn't have received it. Thank you so much for your confirmation. I really appreciate everything you do. See you next time. Yeah. See you Thank too. You. Our pleasure. I think that's well everyone. That's it. <laughs> yep. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much, uh, captioners. Um, so I think uh, one of our captioners is logged out, but uh, Annabelle, thank you so much for your help today. Um, you're, you're free to go. <laughs> Again, could not have done it without it.